a lot of my luck, okay, I'll tell you this, whether these guys come back or not. When I was younger, I had a friend who always used to hang around my house because I always had lots of girls there and he was like dying to fuck. But And most of my friends that I grew up with, the first time they fucked was in my apartment with one of my girlfriends. Because I was fucking young and they, I was the first guy that had an apartment. When I wanted, when I wanted to, to move out, to, my, to get an apartment and move out, my father said, no, stay in the house. And I got along really well with my parents. My mother was a wonderful cook. Okay? So, yeah, that's a, that was one of the reasons I wanted to come to Poland because I haven't eaten good cooking like that since my mother died, you know? But she was a wonderful cook. I had a good relationship in the house. But the problem was, I was fucking so much going to motels, it was costing me more than an apartment. It was economics, the reason I moved out. Not because I didn't get along with my parents. I wish I could have stayed there. You know, and this, you guys can relate to this. When you're working the first time you're young, you're working on a job, sometimes you don't have any money till your paycheck. So if you get paid on Friday and you want to take a girl out on Thursday, you probably have no money. So I would call my father up and say, Dad, spot me 20 bucks, which means lend me $20. So he'd always say, sure, come over. So I'd pick up a girl. I'd say, I'm just going to stop at my parents' house for a few minutes. Come with me. I said, you wait in the car. So I'd go into the house. My mother would see me. She says, stay for supper. So I always want to feed me. I go, No. I gotta go out. She go, why? I got a girlfriend in the car. Bring her in. I want to meet her. I go, no, mom. She go, no. I'm gonna go out. She's gonna. I'm gonna go in the car and say, tell her, and I'm gonna bring her in. I look at my father. Says, Dad, stop her. I'm just gonna fuck this girl. I don't want her to start meeting my family. My mother would look at me. She says, you're such a pig. <laughs> okay. I know, mom. But I'm gonna fuck her, mom. You're disgusting. He, she'd look at my father and she'd say, where does he learn this stuff? <laughs> she'd want to run out to the car and my father would be stopping her and say, no, no, don't go. Leave him alone. Now, I'd understand if it would be my sister, they would do, you know, it's a different set of rules for women and for men. Tell you a story. One day, way before this, I'm at my parents' house. I just started driving. I had to be 16 years old. We start now. My son has to wait till he's 17. But when I was a kid, we could start driving at 16. So I just started driving, and you know, of course, when you start driving, if your father would say. Go get me that. Take the car. Yeah, no problem. It's not even an errand. It's like a, your pleasure to drive. So he says to me, we're having a barbecue in the backyard. It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day. And the neighbor's there with his family, and they joined us for the barbecue. And he's got some kids. And he's got a daughter around my age. But I would just say hello. She's my next door neighbor. You know, you don't want to start with that. So my father says to me, how'd you like to go to New York by car and pick up something I needed for, the, for my business? It's really important. He says, I'll even pay your trip. Pay you to go. I go, you don't have to pay me to go. I'm going. I love to go. It was 350 miles, five, 600 kilometers to drive the car on the highway, that, you know. Ah, it's like a dream. So the neighbor's daughter says, Dad, can I go with David? So I look, my father looks, she, 
and the guy knows me. I used to babysit for the kids sometimes, you know. So he goes, yeah, I'd let you go with David. I trust him. My father smiles and looks at me and says, okay, I'll get you the paperwork. You can leave to, tonight or tomorrow. And so her father says to me, he says, make sure you take two hotel rooms when you go there. Sure, no problem. So I go to my father with my father to his office. He gives me the papers, the, where I have to go. He gives me some money. He gives me a credit card for the gas. He checks the car. We go to a gas station. They check the air and the tires, you know. So my father says to me, you better take two hotel rooms because her father will kill you if you don't take two hotel rooms. I look at my father, I go, Dad, she's not that kind of girl. <laughs> my father looks at me and he starts laughing. Now, picture this, Montreal is an island. We have tons of highways, but to leave Montreal, you have to go over a bridge. Now, there's, from where I live, there's six bridges in different directions. One of them is 15 minutes from my house, you're over the bridge. The other one is 20 minutes. There's another one that's in a half hour, 45 minutes. But we took the bridge, the closest one, because we're going in that direction. Before I got to the other side of the bridge, she's already underneath the steering wheel giving me a blowjob. So I get to New York. We don't need two hotel rooms. She wanted to go because she wanted to get fucked. So we took one hotel room, and when I come back, I'm with my father at the office giving him the papers. He goes, where's the bill for the hotel? I tell him, we took one room. I gave it to her to give to her father. He says, I thought she wasn't that kind of girl. I was sure. I'm just going to ride with her in the car there and back. She was more aggressive than me. And my father used to go all the time. Like when I used to go get money at his house the other time, my father says, Dad, that's not, she's not that kind of girl you have in the car. I go, yeah, Dad. <laughs> you understand? It was like our own little language, you know? Yeah, she's not that kind of girl. And my mother would say, what are you talking about? Would I... My father and I would know what we're talking about. When I said to my father, how many girls did you sleep with before your mother? He goes, I think she's the only one. I couldn't understand. When my mother died, about four years later, I was living in Texas. My father called me, he says, how do you do it? How do you live alone? He was, he was like lost. And I said to him, I've lived alone always. I like living alone. I like my, my own company. But you see, that generation, they were born married. It's different. I don't want to look at or figure out why he was like that. And it's enough to know I'm not like that. My brother is like my father. He's tall, good-looking guy. He's a lawyer in Toronto. And I wouldn't fuck his wife with your dick. <laughs> okay? I look at him. And my, and my wife, too. My wife's taller than me. She's got long legs. She's very attractive. She looks a lot like Julia Roberts. I like to be around good-looking women. When I took her out, she says to me, should I wear high heels or it's going to bother you? I said, I don't care how tall you are. I says, In, where, where, it's, where it's important to me, height means no th nothing. You're taller than me. I'm not going to get mad at you because you're taller than me. I had one friend, he was so short, he used to only look for, sh for short girls. So he used to be on the radio, and his name on the radio was different than in real life because they use a separate name. 
So one day I'm in a record store buying a CD, and I see him there. And I go, hey, Al, how you doing? He goes, hey, Dave, what's up? So we start talking, and you know, there's aisles with the CDs in it. And I see this short girl on the other side there. Her back is to us. So I say, Al, look, she's shorter than you. Go talk to her. So he smiles. Then she turns around and I go, oh, I say, she's too fucking ugly. He says, that's my new girlfriend. <laughs> and you know, it's funny. He never invited me to the wedding. <laughs> but you see, I have a big mouth. I couldn't stop. I said to him, like, oh, I wouldn't fuck her with your dick. <laughs> Yeah, I had problems with ugly girls. I can tell you stories. Ugly girls, I was like having, always having problems going out with ugly girls. If I went after an ugly girl, it's like she knew I was desperate to fuck her. I tell a story. I was working late. And I used to go out during the week. And in Montreal, you go out like at about 11, 12 o'clock. You go to some clubs and you find something there between that time and 3 in the morning and you take it home and you fuck it. So I got home after work. And I went and I took a shower. And after the shower, it was still early. It was late because I worked late. But it was still too early to go out. So I sat down to watch TV and I fell asleep. When I wake up, it's like 1.30. Fuck, I missed my... So I says, you know what, I'm going to try anyway. So I get dressed, I get downtown, it's about 2.30. 2.30? So I go to the, to the place where I had the best luck. You know, you, you get your own places where you have good luck. So I went into the place and I look around. There's a bunch of girls there, but they're already with guys. Most of the girls start going home now with the guys or they're not going home with the guys. And I see there's one girl there. She's not good looking, but she's not really horrible. Her figure's a little lumpy, but I'm horny. I order a couple of shots, two shots, and she's starting to look better. <laughs> so I go sit down, and I start to talk to her, and she's such a bitch. And everything I'm saying, she's negative. And even her voice, I didn't like the way her voice sounded. So I, I said, can I buy you another drink? She goes, you're drinking a lot. So I looked at her, I said, I think I have to tonight. <laughs> so I had a couple more drinks. And then she starts to say things to me. She says, you know, if you think you're going to take me home and fuck me, you're wrong. So I look at her and I go, you know, I want to tell you something. I was so fucking horny tonight. I would have fucked anybody. But after talking to you for a while, I think I'd rather go home and jerk off or fuck a piece of liver with a picture on it. <laughs> okay. She was like, so, fuck. And I left there and I said, fuck, why try? Every time I go after an ugly girl, I get a headache. And I fucking regretted wasting my time. I went out with a girl in 1982. She was Miss Montreal. She almost won the Miss Canada pageant. She was beautiful. French Canadian, strawberry blonde hair, perfect figure. And I met her. She walked in front of my car. I looked at her, I said, fuck, she's gorgeous. 
And as she was walking, I'm thinking how I'm going to fuck her. And she's looking at me in the car and she keeps walking. I throw the car into park. I take out the key. I walk down the street. I go, I have to stop you. She goes, what is it? I says, you're the most beautiful woman I've seen in my life and I have to get to know you. I started talking to her. I went out with her for a year and a half. My friends, every time I brought her with my friends, they were like that. And when I used to go out with her because she had so many engagements because she was, you know, modeling and stuff like that, that all the women would look at me like, why is he with her? Okay, and they would hit on me all the time. I loved it. And for my birthday, she brought her friend over to me. So both of them would give me a blowjob. Fuck. That's the kind of girlfriend you like, you know? It's the perfect gift. You know, you don't have to think, oh, I have one of those already. <laughs> and she had 12 sisters. So I'm thinking in my mind, I'm going to fuck all the sisters. So one of the sisters calls me up. She broke up with a boyfriend. And she comes over to my apartment. I says, why are you here? Next thing I know, I'm fucking her. Then we went up north to their cottage. And I meet her older sister. And I told her, my friend lives near where she told me where she lives. I says, one of my good friends lives a few blocks away from you where you live. She goes, when you go visit him, drop by for coffee. So I do that, and I fuck her too. So now, I'm thinking like this. She brought a friend over to fuck me and her together. And I really liked fucking the first sister I fucked. And I'd like to fuck her and her sister to fuck two sisters. I mean, it was just another one of my goals that I wanted to achieve. So I figured, as smart as I think I am, I'm going to try to fuck the two sisters. Well, sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> and I lost both of them. And she said to me, I heard you fuck my other sister too. Are you going to fuck all my sisters? So I said to her, only the ones that are over 18. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. But it was so exciting. I have this student. <clears throat> He's living in England. He was a Russian. He lived in Montreal, so he speaks English like I do. And then he moved to England. So he's telling me, just last week, he's telling me a story that he met this girl. She's so good looking. He, told, he said, I'd like to take you out. She goes, I have a boyfriend, but my, I have a twin sister. And she just broke up with her boyfriend about two months ago. I can fix you up with her. I know she's going to like you because I like you. She so says, okay. So he calls her sister up. And her sister says, uh, you didn't see what I look like yet. He goes, well, I saw your sister. He, so she says to him, what, do you want my sister? He goes, no, if you're a twin, it's the same thing for me. <laughs> so they decide to meet in this club, and they go out. And what happens is, her sister, the one who fixed her up, is there too. He goes, how come you're there? She goes, day or two after we met, I broke up with my boyfriend. So she goes, and I'm really upset that I gave you to my sister. So he's talking to her and she says, come outside, we're just going to go for like a cigarette or a walk or whatever. So he goes outside with her and she's leaning against this little sports car. And he goes, that's a nice car. Do you know whose it is? She goes, it's mine. He goes, really? He says, take me for a drive. 
So he goes back inside and he tells the sister, I'm just going to go with your sister for a drive in her car. It's two seats. So she says, okay. So he goes in the car with her and they start driving. And she's talking. He says, I'm very upset because I like you a lot. So they pull over. He starts kissing her. So I told him, what did you do? He says, well, he says he'll go out with her later on. He doesn't know what to do. I said, you don't understand something. To me, my mind analyzes it like this. The sister who fixed you up wants you. It's apparent. And it's exciting to her. It's like I went out with a girl. She was a stripper. She used to get turned on. She used to get wet in front of men stripping. It's the way she got turned on. It happens to a lot of women like that. They get turned on exciting you. So I said, you should have taken her right away and fucked her, and then gone back and fucked her sister after. And then you could try to get them both together. Once you fucked each one of them, he goes, oh, he was trying to be nice. Who are you trying to be nice to? He's trying to think of what she's going to want. Oh, he's a nice guy. She didn't want a nice guy. She wanted a guy to fuck her. She wanted to cheat on her sister already. She fixed her sister up with him and then came on the date. All these signals, you have to read them properly. But no, we want to be nice to the women. A lot of our problem is we want to protect these women from us. This goes back to our mothers. We have to be nice to these women. We want to protect them from the, that bastard me. Because all I'm thinking is I want to fuck her. Don't protect her. She knows what she wants. If she wants you, she wants you. Women don't go out to look for a guy. Well, some do. To put him on a hook, keeping him up and down. I was telling you before the story of my, one of my first students. He says to me, I went out with a girl for a year and a half. We broke up. I didn't see her for six months. Then I had two fabulous dates. So I say to him, describe your last fabulous date tells me they went out for dinner I said who paid he goes I did I go, okay then I took her back to her house after and we sat and we talked for four or five hours and then well we kissed for a little bit and I went home I look at him did you fuck her he goes no I go well for me to be a fabulous date, I gotta fuck her, get a blowjob at least. What else is there? So I say, okay. Describe your second fabulous date. It's about the same thing. And I think for a second, I tell him, I'm gonna ask you a stupid question. Did you ever fuck her? And he goes, Oh, like I'm stupid for asking that question. I says, you went out with her for a year and a half. Then you went on two five, and you never fucked her? I said, first of all, you're an idiot. She's a real bitch. You don't think once she thought he wants to fuck me? She could keep him on the hook. For a year and a half, sure they had to break up. Because she probably said after a year and a half, 
either I have to fuck him or I have to let him go. Because she broke up with him. Of course. She controlled everything. He chased after that pussy for a year and a half. And then she didn't see him for six months and then she made him take her out again. Did she ever cook supper for you? No. Most, most of the days she took her out, he goes, yeah. <sighs> yeah. You're an idiot, but imagine what kind of person she is that she could do that to you. And I'm sure every one of you have guys and friends that you know that went out with girls for a long time before they fucked her, if they ever did. My son says to me, one of his friends has a girlfriend. I said, that's great. 15 years old. So I said to him, you think he's fucking her? He goes, no, dad. So I look at the kid, I go, you have a girlfriend? He goes, yeah. You fucking her? He goes, he all gets red. He goes, no. I go, why do you need her for a girlfriend? She's stopping you from talking to any other girl. She's keeping you a little dog, puppy. Now, guys don't do that. Guys don't keep girls around if they don't want to sleep with them. I had in my life two girlfriends that I didn't fuck. One was my best friend's girlfriend, the one I mentioned before. The other one, she was a, a girl who was so good to me. I used to fuck all her friends. When I'd go over to the apartment, one of her friends would come in, i go, I want to fuck your friend. She says, I'll ask her. And she'd tell him what I liked, and she'd fix me up, and I'd fuck her. It was, it was great. She, she, I remember one time we went out to a restaurant because a friend of hers who was a lesbian it was her birthday and she was bringing her new girlfriend her parents were taking her out uh, for her birthday and she invited my friend and she says why don't you come with us because you know her, and you know her parents, and I don't want to bring a guy because I'm just friends with her. So I said, okay. So we go out, and her girlfriend was a stripper. Beautiful body. Good-looking girl. So I'm talking to my friend. Her, my friend's name was Janine. I say, Janine, I want to fuck her. She goes, she's a lesbian. I go, no, 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 no. I want to fuck her, and she'll fuck me. She goes, she says, you know, sometimes you're just too much. You think every girl wants to fuck you? I go, yeah. <laughs> so she talks to her, because she doesn't want her friend to know that she's talking to the lesbian for me to fuck her. And she says to the lesbian, she says, you know, my friend Dave wants to fuck you. She looks at her and she goes, I like Dave. Give him my number. And I fucked her. And her lesbian friend was all pissed off at me. Because I stole her girlfriend. <laughs> she starts to give me shit. She says, oh, you stole. I says, listen. We can share. I don't mind. I can watch you licking her pussy while I'm fucking her in the ass. She says, you're such a pig. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it turned me on. And it turned her on that I wanted her. A lot of it doesn't have to do with anything else, but they get excited. They get turned on. It's those exciting feelings you get. If you feel excited, go for it. What's the worst she could say? No. I 
a girl, a woman could keep a guy on the hook for a year and a half. I can't go three dates if I don't fuck her. He went a year and a half. I'm thinking the fucking guy's crazy. After the third date, if I'm not fucking her, next. If she doesn't know if she wants to fuck you by the third date, she's one of those 60% that don't have an orgasm. She could control you. She's not turned on. Something's wrong. It's not natural. What do men go out with women for? What could you share? You don't want to go shopping with them, that's for sure. You don't want to go buying makeup with them, that's for sure. You don't want to go with them when they want to decorate their house. You don't mind eating their food, good, good cooks. You know, and they say, a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Sure, you're going to like the woman. She cooks for you. She makes you... They aim too high. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah... Please the man. What do men like? Food, sex, watching TV with their friends, a couple of beer. We're not hard to please. But if we feel guilty, if that's what we want, because we're supposed to do other things with them. I had girls ask me lots of times, come shopping with me. No. Come on, no. It'll be the last time we go together for sure. It's like punishment for me. Why do I have to punish myself to please you or you or you? You know, most of my friends wanted to go out with me when we used to go out. <coughs> Because the shy guys, I would pick up a girl, I'd say, this is my friend, he's very shy, he needs somebody like you to take him out of his shell. And he loves a blowjob. <laughs> you know? But a lot of the guys, <clears throat> I remember we'd go out, and I'd pick up a girl, and I'm out of there. If I could get her to my place, or her place, or a motel, I'm gone. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm thinking about. And I remember a bunch of friends came back to my house after or the next morning. Mad! You left us last night. I didn't think I was your father. What do you mean I left you last night? What do you think we went out for? Yeah, but we all came together. I figured we are going to go home together. I go, is it a jerk-off circle? <laughs> I've spoken at a lot of lair meetings. I don't know if, if you know what lairs are. I think they're the stupidest things in the fucking world. I call them jerkle circles. They're all talking about getting the number and getting the girl and what best pickup line is. For me, pickup line is what I see, what I'm thinking. It's what I'm telling her. I had one guy at a lair meeting, so I have the best pickup line. I said, what is it? He tells me. He goes up to a girl and he goes like this. Excuse me, I seem to have lost my number. Can I get yours? <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? I ask them a hundred questions. What do they do? Where do they work? Where do they go to school? I, I can call them the next day without them giving me their number. Because I ask them questions. What's your favorite food? Your favorite color? Do you like what you do? Are you a student? You work? Do you like the company you work for? 
Are you the boss there? I asked him all kinds of questions, getting to know them. I don't want to ask him something that's going to sound like I'm an imbecile. I don't need to work on a pickup line and write him, write him, wait a minute, uh, just a second. Oh, okay. Hi. No, it's what you see. If you look at her, she looks really attractive. I went to California for a seminar. I was a guest speaker there. Well, to be honest with you, after I speak at a seminar, I don't come back in to sit to listen to the other speakers. Because most of the guys that you know or you've heard about were my students. And they don't all say the same things I do. They go with their own thing. They're trying to sell. So if I talk, after I finish talking, I'm out of there. So I was in Los Angeles, and one of my best friends lives in Los Angeles. So I tell him, I'm going to speak in the morning. Let's go for lunch in the afternoon. So he takes me to Santa Monica Beach. And it's right by the water where the boats are. It's a very rich area. And he's sitting beside the railing, but it's a curved railing. So there's a woman sitting behind him, but when I look at him, I can see her right there, because it's round. So I'm looking at her and I go, shit, she's beautiful. She wasn't a young woman, she was older. And I said, you know, look at the waitress, you look at her, look at the woman over there. They all look like sisters, all their tits are the same. Must use the same fucking doctor. Because there, every woman has them done. So I'm looking at her. I'm talking to my friend. I'm looking at her. He goes, who are you looking at? I go, the woman back there. I'm just looking at her. She goes, you're going to make her feel uncomfortable. You don't stop looking at her. I says, right now, I have her legs behind her ears, and I'm fucking her on the table. <laughs> and all I'm saying that, I'm looking at her, and I'm thinking that, you know? So she looks at me a few times, and every time she looks at me, I don't take my eyes off her. So after a while, she gets up and she walks over. I said, hey, she's coming over here. He goes, she's probably going to give you shit because you keep staring at her. So she says to me, do I know you? And I go, no, I'm, I regret that I don't know you. I have to tell you, if I made you feel uncomfortable, you're one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. And I'm fantasizing while I'm looking at you. She gets red and she says, thank you. And she goes to sit down. And I still don't stop looking at her. <coughs> so when I leave, I tell my friend, I said, I'm going to go. I have to go say goodbye to her. So because the door is there, but I'm going to walk that way to walk right by her table. So I get up and I'm smiling at her. And I see she's writing something down as... She sees me getting closer to her, and I walk over to her, I go, I have to tell you something, I'm here in California, and I'm on Santa Monica Beach with the beautiful scenery, the water, the boats, the ocean, and you're the best scenery I've seen. It's such a pleasure to be able to have you here, you made my day, I enjoyed the meal so much. She says, thank you, thank you, thank you. She takes my hand, and just like to thank me. And she puts a little piece of paper in my hand. I walk, I walk out with my friend, and I take a look, and it's her phone number. And my friend says, you never stop, eh? I go, it's, it's natural for me. I'm out with my wife, and, I, and I'm talking to the waitress. And, and I'm... We call it chatting her up. And my wife says, you want to fuck her? I said, in my mind, I have her ready. Why should I deny it? Do you know how many guys look at girls and their wife says, or their girlfriend says, what are you looking at? Nothing, nothing, uh, I'm nothing. We're men. Remember. 
go back to the beginning, the original. We're only supposed to do two things, eat and fuck. If we're not thinking about fucking, we should be. Yeah, 50% of all men think about sex all the time. That other 50%, you don't think they ever think about sex? But they think about sex a lot of the time. This is what makes the world go round. After you have a computer and you have a computer game and you have an iPod and a cell phone, you have all these things. What else you want? You want a nice, nice pussy and set of tits to play with. That's what you want. All the computer games in the world aren't going to satisfy you. That's what we all want doesn't matter how much distraction we get. <clears throat> if it's not food, it's sex. You sometimes go out for a good meal, you're full. You like to go home and relax, open your belt and just sit and relax. The next nice thing would be to get a blowjob. Be a perfect day. What's wrong with saying that's what I want? You have to be afraid to say to a woman that's what I want, that's what I like. By being afraid, <clears throat> they're controlling you. And you're giving them the controls. They're not taking it. Because if you don't give them the controls, they can't get the controls. You're giving it to them. It makes their job too easy. And they're never happy when they have the controls. I've seen so many women tell my wife, you're so lucky with him. He's such a nice guy, so romantic. The neighbor next door is a single woman. She, I just have to say she's in her late 40s, early 50s. She's always calling me up to talk to me, to ask me questions. And she says to my wife, I like your husband. I'm not after him. Why would you say that if I'm not after him? Why would you say it to my wife? My wife says I hate her. She, she goes, she wants to fuck you for sure. And I look at my wife and I tell her like this. Am I ever happy that you never chose girls for me? Because I don't like your taste in women. Because I wouldn't fuck her for any reason. You know, I was very lucky, I think I mentioned this to you. When I was young, I saved a guy's life. He was a biker. And he gave me a present, a reward for saving his life. He gave me this blonde girl, brought her to my apartment, and she was beautiful. And I remember she didn't speak a word of English, she only spoke French. And my French wasn't that good, but I always said, I fucking French, no problem. And on her ass, he, t he turns her around, he pulls her pants down, and on her ass, tattooed my name on it. Tattoo, you know, bzzz. I go, fuck, he goes, she's yours. Well, again, that's the kind of present I like. <laughs> I can't get upset with getting a gift like that. Where you keep this present? <laughs> in, in 
in my bed. Okay? And then I said to a friend of mine, I says, you know, today there's a 50-year-old plus woman walking around with sagging tits and a sagging ass with my name on it. <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I loved fucking her. Today, I don't think I want to look at her even. It's the way life goes on. I wouldn't mind fucking her daughter if she had one, if she looks like the mother did. Most men always want a 16 to 18 year old girl. Doesn't matter how old we get. We're never looking this way. We're always looking this way. See an 18 year old tight body, good looking girl, you want to fuck her. After that, they're only good for mothers and grandmothers. It's the reality of life. If you don't control them when you're younger, later on in life, they'll drive you crazy because they won't have anything to do but drive you crazy. <coughs> you guys all have mothers and fathers and you can see. The more you leave the house, the more your poor father has to stay there with her alone. And you think to yourself, I'm glad I'm out. She puts all her attention on your father. And if these guys, your fathers, don't have the control that I have, I don't let it go. I've gotten so many friends and friends' wives tell me, you're too hard on your wife. And I listen to what they say and I ignore it. It's their opinion. I've seen my friends, you know, they're with their wives, and their wives are always criticizing everything they do. And I sometimes say to them, you know, why don't you marry him if you, if you can't do anything right? It's a frustration. It's why it's good when women have daughters. Because then their daughters get married and they help with the grandchildren. With sons, the son goes with the wife's parents. It's always like that. The women take over. you want to direct your own destiny if you don't direct it if you get lazy and let it go by you lose it laziness is a terrible sickness a lot of the guys that are gurus today used to tell me I can't keep them I can get them but I can't keep them I tell them, keeping them is harder than getting them. Keeping them in control is very hard. Yeah, you have to be ready to walk away from it. If it doesn't go your way. If you're not in control, you'll never be in control. Out of all the women I saw in my life, I'd say that less than five broke up with me. And if they broke up with me, it was always, <clears throat> if we don't get engaged, I'm not going to see you anymore. Either you marry me or I'm not seeing you anymore. I used to hear that. I go, you don't even know who I am. You mean to say you love me so much that if I don't marry you, you're never going to see me again. How does that make sense? 
And I hear that hundreds of times from guys. She said, if I don't change, she's leaving. What do you mean? I've never changed. Change what? Ah, you weren't yourself. You were somebody else because now she doesn't like that person you pretended to be. It's very simple. You couldn't be yourself. Why do you have to change? I guarantee you have friends that you've heard their problems with their wife or fiance. If you change, I'll stay with you. If you don't change, I'm leaving. Change what? You don't like my underwear? I have to change my underwear. I have to change my personality. You obviously didn't let them know who they're dealing with. Change what? You don't like the way I am? Find somebody else. I've heard that so many times. The older you get, the more you hear it. They're living together for four or five years, and she wants him to change. Yeah. She wants him to change to a guy like me who knows what he wants. Because after a while, they don't want the dog. If a woman wants a small puppy dog, let her buy a puppy dog. They only live about 15 years. Because if you're that puppy dog, you only live about 15 years too. When they get bored with it, at least the dog dies. You they try to kill. <laughs> but that's the reality. You're on the hook. You're always, yes dear, yes dear. You can't say yes enough. There's, there's no limit to how much you're going to be pushed. If you give her this much, she wants the rest of the body. You've heard that before. I'm not telling you anything you didn't hear before. You buy a girl an expensive present the next time. I had a friend. He says, I bought her a diamond ring. And she used to give me a blowjob. I bought her a fur coat. She gave me a blowjob. I bought her a Mercedes. She didn't give me a blowjob. I had a friend. He loved pizza. Loved it. He could eat pizza seven days a week. And his wife got tired of it. She says she doesn't let me order pizza anymore. What do you mean she doesn't let you order? Order a pizza if you want a pizza. Because no. He said to me, I have to give her $50 to order a pizza. She says, if you give me $50, you can order a pizza. What's wrong with this picture? He let his wife too much. And we come up with another rule, I think so. Let the women only pleasure you. She'll let me have a pizza if I give her $50? You know, a lot of times I would tell a woman like this, you know, let me ask you a question. You just met me. If I came here with a suitcase and opened it up and there was a real million dollars U.S. in cash, would you fuck me? Real million dollars. Most girls go, yeah, for a million dollars. I say, we've established what you are. We're only haggling over price. <laughs> That's the reality of it. Everybody has their price. For a million dollars, you'd fuck me right now before you know me. I say, how about ten dollars and fifty-nine cents? <laughs>
You know? I never like going with prostitutes. Not that I'm better or worse. It's because it's not the same thing. She's doing a job. She doesn't have any feelings for you. Yeah, sometimes I could see a need for it. Sometimes you need to get a blowjob. Doesn't matter who gives it to you. You take it from a prostitute. But I like the reaction the, the, from the woman when she oh moves or oh I like that. Oh I like you know I like the reaction. I like the 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 um, how do you say it? The the um, feedback the the you know the whole, it's the whole package you know I to tell a woman sometimes I got to the point where if I wanted to fuck him on the first date one night stand I could I had tricks for everything and I would say to her I know I can't fuck you tonight because I don't ever want to fuck you on a one night stand if we would sleep together you'd have to promise me it's not a one night stand and then when I fucked her the next day I might say fuck I don't want to see her again I wanted more than one night when I first met her but after I slept with her some girls and you know there's two kinds of good-looking girls. There's ones that know they're really good-looking and ones that don't know they're good-looking. The ones that don't know how good-looking they are, they're the best. The really good-looking girls are not as good in bed as the other girls because they don't have to do much. I went out with a girl one time, I tell this story and guys laugh, but it's true. I took her out, we went out for, to a show, I took her for dinner, I brought her back to her place and I'm fucking her like crazy. And she's coming like a fucking pig. And, I, and she stops after she comes. And she says, I'm going to go to sleep. I go, no, I didn't finish. She goes, come tomorrow again. What the fuck's wrong with you? I didn't finish. She said, I'm too tired. I was so mad. I stood up on her bed and I pissed on her. A fucking bitch. She was finished. She had some multiple orgasms. She was too tired anymore. She didn't care who I was. What I did. One of the reasons <clears throat> that I decided to change my life with my children and my wife, I remember I went out with this girl, she was really good looking. And I fucked her all night long. And the next morning she said to me, I'm going to go home now. I'm going to probably sleep for two days. I says, really? I says, did you enjoy it? She goes, you know, I have to tell you. I feel like I was with a professional, she says to me. And I'm thinking and I'm going, you know, I've gone too far, full circle. Yeah, when I was younger, I would be like most guys. I would come fast. And as I got older, and I learned different tricks from women, I could control myself. I could, I could come whenever I wanted, really. It's, you get that kind of control. The more you fuck, it has nothing to do with how good you are. It has to do with experience. And, yeah, I was a good mechanic. And when I got to that point where she says, I felt like I was with professionals, felt it, you know, yeah, I had fucked every kind of girl that I wanted to, 
I went through a list of in my mind of which kind of girls I wanted. Uh, Romanian girls, or Russian girls, Polish girls, Canadian girls, Chinese girls, black girls, you know, Indian girls. I had to, I even fucked an Eskimo. A couple of them. I tried everything. I, Indian, like from, from Canadian Indian, you know, not from India, all of them. I remember I was going through my list and I looked at this girl, I saw her, I swear she looked Japanese. So I'm fucking her. And I said, you know, you're the first Japanese girl I ever fucked. She looks, I'm Korean. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted, she got mad. I said, I wanted a Japanese girl. She goes, a lot of people ask me if I'm Japanese. I should have asked you. She says, you wouldn't have fucked me? I said, I would have, but at least I, I'm surprised. <laughs> I went through a list of... I want to try every... A friend of mine tells me, oh, this girl is Croatian. Oh, i got to try one. You know, it's like trying different french fries <laughs> you know oh he's t where is he his partner's telling me on the way here he says there's a place over there with different kinds of pierogi okay i'd like to try the different ones same thing like women i'd like to try the different ones you know the only women that i didn't fuck you're going to find this funny, is the Filipinos. And I'm going to tell you why. And you're going to notice it if you see a Filipino woman. When they're walking away from you from behind, their figure looks like a little boy. And I got turned off, you know. Even though I know it's a woman, I just, it never turned me on. You know, my wife said to me, like we had the Filipino girl, she said to me, do I have to watch you with her? I go, I don't like Filipinos. They all look like little boys from the back. So now my, now my wife goes, you know, you're right. From the back, they all look like little boys. <laughs> it's like the first girl we had for my older son, he's 15, was from Grenada. She was black. And I'm telling you, he's... He didn't want to tell me, but he's going after the black girls in his school. I tell my wife, I made a mistake with him. Because when you're taken care of, like your mother, like at a young age, by a, a babysitter, a nanny, whatever, and she's black, he starts to simulate in his mind with black girls. When we were interviewing for the second one, because... She was with us for his first six years, and then she got pregnant with somebody else's baby, I think, or whatever, and she couldn't work anymore, so we had to find another one. And we're interviewing at the house, and I tell my son, sit at the table with us. We're going to interview for your brother. Your brother's already a year old now. Now we've got to find somebody for him. And every girl that he says he likes was a black one. I said to my wife, you see, he likes only the black ones. We chose the Filipino girl for the younger one. And then she got married and had a kid and she got to stop working for us. So we started looking for another one and the little guy, he says, he was only liking the Filipino girls. <laughs> it's like a training. It's what they're in their mind. My mother brought me up, so I liked all the girls. <laughs> I didn't have a preference. But I have to tell you, when I met the first Polish girl, I wasn't thinking about fucking her. I was thinking about her cooking for me. <laughs> it's the first thing that went through my mind. You know, it's...
what you're trained, what you believe, what you know. I have a friend. He only <coughs> likes ugly girls. And if you see the guy, he's a good-looking guy, but he only would go up with ugly girls. And I would say, to, and, and he would, first he used to say to me like this, I have a new girlfriend. So he'd come by with her and i go, what's wrong with you? It's the same money to go out with a good-looking girl. He'd say, no, he likes the ugly ones. So one day he says to me, my girlfriend has a friend that's had a problem, so I can't take her out because she doesn't want to leave her alone. Would you go out with me and her and you go out with the other one? So I go, I saw your girlfriend and I don't want it. He goes, no, her, her friend is good looking. He says, you know, ugly girls always have a good looking friend. So I said to him, his name is DJ. I said, DJ, I'll take a chance, but if she's ugly, you're dead meat. Okay. He comes by with her, and I'm like in shock. She's really good looking. I'm like, hey, this is great comes to my apartment after we went out for supper and we're having some drinks and then DJ says he's going to go home he's going to take her home because she lives next door to the other one so she says right away would you mind taking me home I'd, I'd rather go home with you than with DJ and my friend so I go sure because something's in her mind if she wants me to take her home. If she's just going home, who does she give a shit to taking her home? So they leave. I'm going to leave with her in a few minutes. She says, I'd like another glass of wine. So we sit down on the sofa. And she tells me, I have to tell you something. I'm really turned on to you. I like you a lot. But I want to tell you something. I just came off a really bad relationship. I don't want to discuss it. I don't want you ever to ask me about your relation, my relationship. And what I'd like is, <coughs> I'd like to have a guy that when I need sex, I could call him up. And when he needs sex, he can call me up anytime. And we do it, and you can still see other people, and I'll see other people. And I'm listening to her, and I'm thinking, i got to pinch myself. It's too fucking good to be true. <laughs> I was like, well, fuck, you know. So I say to her like this is, you know what? I love this idea. You got it. She was Italian. She had a body like Sophia Loren when she was younger, you know? She was, and really attractive. So I went out with her for three, <laughs> three and a half years. I had some clothes at her apartment. I used to go there if I didn't, if I went downtown and I didn't find anything, I would not look too hard. I never hit an ugly girl again because I always had something waiting for me. It was great. And it was a time when AIDS had come out and you get paranoid a little bit and you, you know, you want to fuck a girl without a condom, you know, but you want to fuck one without a condom, you want to trust her and you want to know her. So it was to have safe sex. It was like, it was for the time, it was a perfect relationship. Then she would cook for me, supper. She said, she'd call me up at work. What are you doing tonight? I go, well, I was going to go home and just chill out, order a pizza or something. She says, come over to my place. I made supper. So you'll stay overnight here, and you'll, go, you'll leave to go to work tomorrow morning. I had clothes there. She washed it for me. Yeah, it was okay. No problem. So one day I get there, and she says, I have to talk to you. I couldn't even think of what you want to talk to me about. 
She tells me, you know, we've been going out now for three and a half years. And I'm falling in love with you. You're a fuck. She goes, I want to start to change our relationship. And I tell her like this, listen. When you met me, you read me the riot act. That's the relationship you wanted. All I said was, I could live with that. You didn't ask what my opinion was. You didn't ask what I wanted. I said, I'll live with that relationship. I've loved it. I like being with you. I like sleeping with you. You're a great cook. Everything is good. But I'm not ready to change any part of that relationship. I'm not ready to go further. I don't want to know about your family. I don't want to bring you to my family. I like it the way it is. And of course, it got harder. It didn't take even three months and we weren't seeing each other anymore. But I had to stay firm. I wouldn't have been happy if I would have changed the relationship. It was too good. It was exactly what I wanted. She decided, but I lived by it. But now I'm not ready to change it. A lot of my friends had met her and know, knew her and they used to go, are you crazy? She's a good woman. She's make a nice mother. I go, you're probably right. But after I'm fucking her, I can go over to another girl and fuck her. Sometimes I'm all excited. I'm going to fuck the other one in the ass all night. You know, I just didn't want to change what I had. Yeah, it's tough. Sometimes you think to yourself, am I making the right decision? And if you ask your friends, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. But you have to know what you want. It's what you want. What you're ready for. When I was ready to have children... It wasn't to change my relationship and live with one woman. Sometimes I look at my wife and I say to myself, yeah, I'd like to fuck something else. It's like I told Thomas. I quit smoking 15 years ago, quit smoking cigarettes. And I have to tell you honestly, every day for the last 15 years I wanted to smoke a cigarette. But I stopped. Because I know... I should, and it's not good for me. But it doesn't mean that I don't have that craving. You have to fight that craving. You have to fight what you know you want to do. It's better for me. Look, I look at it this way. I had a heart operation. I was lucky. I never had a heart attack. They noticed I had a little bit of discomfort in my chest one day. And I'm talking to the doctor. He's my friend. I know him since 1972. He was the doctor for infectious diseases. When I used to scratch after fucking a girl, I'd go to him, you know? So he knew me. And I remember he used to give me a lecture every time. He says... You should settle down, and you should then you should have kids and get married. So when I decided to settle down, I used to say, it's your fault. I listened to you finally. So he used to always, so we stayed friends. So I told him, I, have a, I walked from there to there, and I felt a little pressure. Not a pain, a pressure. So he says to me, go to the emergency at a hospital, tell me I had a chest pain. So I'm naive a little bit. I go into the hospital. I tell them I had a chest pain. Come in right away. Ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom. Two seconds later, I'm in a bed. They got all kinds of fucking equipment on me. They take it very seriously. I didn't know how serious they took it. I called my wife. She says, where are you? I said, I'm in the hospital in the emergency. She says, what's wrong? I go, I just told them I had a little pressure. They gave me fucking 500 tests. They found I have a blockage. So 
they said to me, we'll fix the blockage. But because I wasn't urgent, they called it elective surgery. So I was on the waiting list. And everybody who's ahead of me is, guy had a heart attack, he's ahead of me. So he waited and waited and waited. Finally, I get a call, which is, it's like a joke, because they called me ten times. Come in. As I'm ready to go, they called up, no, it's canceled. There was emergency ahead of you. So March 2nd, they called me to go in. And I said to my wife, she says, they call, I called me for March 2nd. And we both, we were canceled so many times. As Thomas knows, we were canceled so many times. I figured out. Ah, next thing I know, psh, into the fucking operating room and they cut me. Now, I've got to tell you something. My wife says, are you nervous? I go, listen, if I don't wake up, I'm not going to know what happened. And if I wake up, I'm going to have to deal with it. They cut your chest open. They break your ribs. They take out your heart. They took a fucking vein from my leg. They fixed the plumbing. Then they put back your heart and they close you up with wire. So the doctor said to me, if you want to get out fast, you want to recuperate, you have to fight it. You have to get up, start walking around as soon as possible. Six days after the operation, they sent me home. The doctor says to me, I said, how do I get home? He goes, the therapist has to give you a test. You have to walk down the hall, and you have to walk up a flight of stairs and down a flight of stairs, and they take your pulse. If it's no good, or you get dizzy, you're not ready to go home yet. So I told the girl, I said, the, 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 the nurse, I said, I want to go for a walk today. She says, it's too early. I said, I want to go for a walk. She says, okay, just go to the door of the room and come back. So I go, okay. I go to the door. I didn't feel nothing. I go out the door. I start to walk down the hall. They're chasing it. You're not supposed to go that far. The next day was the same thing. After the third day, I'm walking up the flight of stairs. They sent this orderly with me to go with me. He goes, you're not supposed to go up the stairs. I go, shut up already. I'm going to go up the stairs. I know I'm not supposed to go up the stairs. But I want the exercise. So after four days, I tell the doctor, how do I get out of here? I want to go home. He goes, you have to take the test with the therapist. So I said, he says, okay, I'll send the therapist. He comes to me, he says, when did you have your operation? I says, four days ago. He says, I'll come tomorrow. You're not ready for the test. I said, listen to me. You better be here tomorrow. I'm going to take the test tomorrow, or I'm leaving anyway. So the doctor's right there. He looks at the doctor, and the doctor tells him like this. He says, listen. He says, if David says he's leaving anyway, he's leaving anyway. <laughs> Give him the test. So you go up the stairs, go down the stairs. He takes my pulse, puts a machine on my fingers. He goes, you can go home tomorrow. I walked around the block. I healed really well. When I went to see the doctor after one month, I said, I have to tell me when I can take a plane. I have to go to Poland. He looks at me and he goes, you know, I have to tell you something. He says, you're the best patient I've ever had in my life. Because a lot of patients, they want to lie in that bed. No, no, it hurts. Don't move. Uh, uh, don't touch me. Leave me alone. I want out. I want to get the fuck out of there. So he says, gives me, he says, you can go after six weeks. You can't lift more than five pounds. So I said, okay. So after six weeks, we made the arrangements to come here. So I called him up and says, you know what? I have to be able to lift more than five pounds. He says, I tell you five pounds, but it could be ten. I said, what about my suitcase? He goes, get one you could pull. You're not supposed to pull more than 20 pounds. 
So I said, okay. He says, don't do too much because you're going to hurt yourself. So he says, just like that, take it one day at a time. And that's what I did. I, I pushed myself, yeah, because I wanted to get better. I wanted to get out. Even my next door neighbors tell my wife, the guy's incredible. Are you really going away? On the 2nd of May, it's two months since they operated on me. All you guys must know people who had those operations. You tell them a guy flew out of his country in the, uh, not even two months after an operation like that. Yeah, I'm proud of myself because I know the control is in here. It's what I feel I could do. It should motivate you guys because you want to know something? What happened if I would have died? I wouldn't know if I died or not. I'm dead. But at least none of you guys could catch up and fuck as many women as I did. <laughs> this what I got. I can't give back. I enjoyed it. There's no guarantees how long you're going to live, how long you're going to be young, how long you're going to be able to fuck. If you don't enjoy it now. You know, I know this guy, he had like an ulcer and he can't eat certain foods anymore. And what he eats, you wouldn't want to eat. And you know what he says to me? He says, I don't know if it's better to be dead. I can't enjoy food anymore. I don't fuck anymore. And I'm thinking to myself, Jesus. That's the scariest thing for me if I can't enjoy food and fucking. What's the use of anything after that? What, a new computer? A new video game? You only have one life. This is closer to you than it is to anybody else. You have to be number one. You have to get what you want. You don't get a second chance. If you think you're coming back, well, like I say, if I come back, I want to be a lion. If you don't enjoy it now, when are you going to enjoy it? You're young. You're virile. Don't let somebody else make the decisions you want. If you think you want something, go for it. If it doesn't work, want something else after that. But you have to go for it to enjoy it. One thing, remember, you could make a billion dollars in your lifetime. You could have six chefs working for you. But fucking is going to be the same enjoyment for you or the poorest guy in the street. It's a funny thing that when God made us, that we all share the same. One doesn't have it better than the other. Yeah, if you can afford better food, or you got it. But fucking, we all get the same pleasure out of fucking. something no matter how rich or poor you are you get to enjoy the same like everybody else yeah if you're a millionaire you can drive a Rolls Royce you can't eat the Rolls Royce and you can't fuck the Rolls Royce but you can drive it okay you can have a boat yeah okay the poor guy can't have a boat but you can all fuck the same way. You can all enjoy that fucking like anybody else. Nobody fucks better than you. It's all the same. And whatever, I want you to understand this, a lot of guys say 
and I think we're going to break after this. Finish the sentence. A lot of guys say, oh, <coughs> you can't be like David X. He's a natural. That's all bullshit. I don't feel I'm better than any one of you. I don't feel I can do anything that you guys can't do. If I do something better than you, it's because of experience, because I did more of it. That's all. Whatever I can do, you can all do. A lot of the guys want you to think that you can't be like him because he's special. I'm not. I'm just a guy who was determined to do what I wanted. That's all it is. Remember that. Nobody is better than the next guy. 